Hello, I'm Josh from the UK OSINT community, and in this video, we'll be looking at who is data through hooksy.com. Firstly, this style of video is still quite new for us, so please let us know your feedback in the comments on whether you find benefit from them and if you want to see more of them in the future. Before we go on to hooksy.com itself, let's take a brief look at what who is data actually is. You'll often find this data by querying databases from domain registrars like godaddy.com, for example. When you do this, it allows you to find domain registration data. For example, registrant's full name, email address, phone number, and even a home address just from searching a domain name. So as you can imagine, that's a huge head start in any investigation where you may only be starting with a domain name. Or as you'll soon see through Hooksy, we can even reverse that and start with a person's name or a company name or an email address and search that to find the domain names that that person owns. Now let's move on to hooksy.com. I'll be focusing on some of the more main search functionality of the website, but I definitely encourage you to come and have a look for yourself around the entire website, because even just while making this video, I came across new areas of Hooksy that I wasn't really aware of previously, and it's all very interesting stuff. But let's start off by going down to the search bar down here. This is one of the main ways that people search Hooksy, but I'll show you another way to do this later on in the video too. So I'm going to go and put a domain into this box, and you can see that we're on the who is lookup option. When I press go, that's going to take us through to the results. You can see this page in particular with this domain is quite bare. There's not too much information. You might find this quite commonly because recently, 2025 and in recent years, when you register a domain, it's going to have that privacy activated by default. So they hide your details and don't put them in these public who is databases. There may be some domains that have to have it public, but in general, you'll often find them to not be revealed like this. But there are some ways that we can get around this and try to find old historic data as well. Because for now, all we can see is things like, so the domain, and it will show us how many similar domains it's aware of. You can see those on the side here, things with like .net and .org and so on. It will show us what registrar they use. Again, that could be things like GoDaddy and how many other domains use those. And then down here is where we would see the registrant contact details, like their name, email address, home address, phone number, and so on. But we don't see that here with this one. But you can also see here on the side, it says who is history. And we have lots of different records from 2016, 2017, and there are a lot more that come up to 2025. So if we go to look through those, we might find some historic ones that do reveal the data before they set the privacy on. So if I click on view all historic records, we get 47 records in this who is history dating from 2016. And we can see already in this first one, we have a name of Liberty Global that will very often be a human's name. And we get an email address of Todd G. So here we get partial name and the email address we can search on other tools to potentially identify an individual. And of course, this might be even easier and even better if it's an individual's normal domain and not belonging to a company. And then as we go down, you can see how they change. Like just in May 2016, it's now changed to be redacted and it uses a fake uh, privacy email address and the name is Perfect Privacy LLC. As you go down, you'll start to see that while most of them are perfect privacy, mixed in between these is actually some results which do reveal the information again. Like here we have August 2018, it now goes back to the name and the email address. And there are even some others in here that are a different person's email address as well. So it's quite strange sometimes. You'll see that it's not always that previously it was nothing, now it's always private. Especially with companies, you'll see that sometimes mixed in between randomly, they will sometimes make it public for whatever reason. Sometimes it's to verify ownership and things like that, but there's many different reasons this might happen. And that could be a way to find email addresses, get formats for the company's emails, things like that. What we'll do next is have a look at the other search options we have on Hooksy. So if we go back to the homepage, 
you'll see under the dropdown that it's not just a domain that we can search, because for who is lookup and who is history, you search a domain name. But then we have reverse who is, which is where we can search owner's name, company name, email address, or domain keyword. That's all that we can do here for free. There's other websites where you might be able to search a home address and things like that. But this is plenty of very powerful that we have here on Hooksy. So if I were to search a name and just enter a very basic name of John Smith, for example, press go, that will go through and show us all of these different domain names that belong or have historically belonged to someone with that name. And the same goes for the email address search and domain keywords is a good one we'll come back to. And there's a lot of powerful things you can do with these. And I'm sure that everyone who's watching will have their own creative use cases that they can use these for in completely different ways. Now, if we go and click into one of these, like SEO GPTs, for example, we do now get that same kind of page, but with a registrant contact. So we get the name John Smith, and it says that there's 87,000 other domains with that name as the registrant. We get a home address email address and a phone number and all of this information that can kickstart your investigation. Like I said, there are also other formats where we can see it all in JSON a lot more easily in my opinion. And that might be something you want to do, especially if you did start using the actual API officially, you can use this kind of data and these formats to put those into your own tools. Now this covers lots of the things we're able to do with Hooksy. But I do want to show one extra thing, which is the way that I personally like to search on this website. But rather than coming down and searching here, I personally like to use this live demo of the API. You can purchase the API properly and do other things, but I find it completely fine to just use this live demo each time for my uses. So I like to go to, for example, who is history, right click, open link in new tab, now we'll open it up here and you're able to run any searches that you want and it will return it to you in JSON format or you can choose XML. I'm actually going to go to the reverse who is API here. And this now gives us all of these different options. So you could choose a name or an email address, all the same things as before. And you can then choose what mode you want to use. This is really important because if you leave it on default, it will give you a maximum of 1000 results but few contact details. So that might just be an email address and a name, but then you might be missing out on the phone number and the home address, or it might mix and match those as well. So it's a lot better usually to put it on default, which ironically isn't the default, but if you put it to this, it will give you a maximum of 100 results, but you get the full contact details. So you're making sure that you're not going to be missing anything. So that's generally what I recommend using, especially if you're searching a bit of a more unique name or an email address. Typically, most people don't have more than 100 domains, but of course, there's always the option that someone could. So definitely keep an open mind on that. So before we end off the video, there's one more quick use case that I want to show. And I would love to hear your ideas on how this could be used as well. So on this API page, what we can do is go to the domain keyword, and this allows you to type in any keyword and it will return domains, which are either that complete word or that contain that word somewhere in it. So you could technically type the name of any drugs here or anything else that you're investigating. And if someone's registered a domain with that keyword in it, you may see that pop up here along with registrant details if those have ever been available because this is searching the who is history as well. So even if a domain currently is private, you're searching across the entire database that they have. So I'm going to go and enter a keyword here. I'm just entering England because for this use case, I want to make sure that we're getting some that are from the UK. But again, you can enter any keyword you want here. The only unfortunate thing is that for free, we are only getting 100 results unless you want to change it to some of the other modes and get more results and fewer contact details. That's definitely still an option because you could use this domain keyword search just to find potential domains and then take it to the default one or other searches on Hooksy 
to find more data about a specific domain later. So you definitely have lots of options. I'm going to run it on default for the 100 results with the keyword England. Now you can see we get all of this JSON data back where we have the domain names and each result is a different domain name. So you get all of those there. And then we get other things like the administrative contact, technical contact, billing contact, and sometimes there's others. You, we have registrant contact here as well, where we get names, as you already know, the addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, and so on. But an extra idea that you have here is again using bookmarklets. And we go through those in a lot of different videos because you can use them across basically everything and you have unlimited power with those. If you're not aware of what a bookmarklet is, I definitely recommend looking that up. But basically, it's a bit of JavaScript code that you store as a bookmark. So you might be used to just storing URLs as a bookmark for easy access to them. It's basically the same thing, but instead of a URL, you put JavaScript code. And then when you click on that bookmark, it activates that code on the page that you're on. So that gives you some really, really cool functionality. For example, here on Hooksy, we can use that. And I simply got ChatGPT to create a very basic example of a bookmarklet for this, where it helps me to search through these hundreds of results, or in this case, 100 results, and give me an overview of where each domain is from. So for example, if I go up to my bookmarklets folder here and I click on Hooksy, that's going to give me this very nice overview panel where we can see that 43 out of the 100 unique domains are from registrants who are based with an England address. We can see that zero are from Wales, five from Scotland, zero from Northern Ireland, and so on. There's all of these other ones here. Then if I were to click on one of these categories, you can see it even expands at the bottom and shows me all of the domains that are actually from you know, Scotland or from a registrant in Scotland. Likewise with England, I can click on that and it now shows me all of the ones from here. So that's just a really cool thing that gives you extra functionality and helps you analyze these results a lot more quickly rather than having to just scroll through these or use your browser's find function. So bookmarklets are such an interesting thing that you can use across all of your investigations and everyone can create their own. You can add your own styles, add your own logos, make it specific to the data that you actually need for your investigation. So that's definitely something I recommend looking into after this video as well. And that's the end of this video. Hopefully it was beneficial, and even to people who knew about Hooksy previously, hopefully it gives some extra ideas on the ways that you can use the search functionality and add extra functionality using things like the bookmarklets. And I still definitely recommend having a look through the entire website yourself, because there's lots of different opportunities, like for students who may be able to get some free API credits. Well, there's also the options to buy data from Hooksy and incorporate that into your own tools and software or even just looking through other options they have. For example, their bulk who is lookup, or they have lists that they give away for free every day of domains that will expire tomorrow or domains that were already deleted yesterday. So you can look through all of those things and come up with your new creative ideas to use those different bits of data. Don't forget to leave a comment to let us know what you thought of this video and what other ones you might want to see in the future. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.